Hello, this is Leo and welcome back to Space Lab. Space Lab version 1.5 is now able to connect directly to Dolby Atmos Composer and Dolby Atmos Composer Essential. As soon as Space Lab is instantiated on a session where the Dolby Atmos Composer is present, both the Composer and Space Lab plugins recognize each other and establish a connection. This connection becomes visible in the connections list on the left side in the Composer window. The first line in the list element for Spacelab contains the name of the instance. You can relabel this instance right there or in Spacelab. It also contains a connect button to manually connect or disconnect the Spacelab instance from the composer. Here you'll also find mute and solo buttons, a button for opening the Spacelab editor and the meters. In the second line, you can set the desired virtual speaker layout that Spacelab will render its reverb to. This speaker layout will be part of the composite in your Atmos mix, and you can select the layout from the extensive list of layouts offered by Spacelab. If you have created your own layouts in Spacelab, they will, of course, also be selectable here as well. Then we have one line for each Spacelab source. Here you'll see the name of each source, meters, mute and solo buttons, and the switch for converting a source into a dynamic object. All Spacelab sources are panned to the selected speaker layout by default, except if they are dynamic objects. If you convert a source into a bunch of dynamic objects, extra channels in your Atmos mix are reserved for them. You can also convert a Spacelab source into dynamic objects in Spacelab itself through the setup window of the individual source. And also in the source setup window, which is meant for batch setup. The panning of the objects of this source is converted to dynamic metadata for the corresponding objects in your Atmos mix. Bear in mind that if you have any channel of a Spacelab source set as an LFE channel, after switching to dynamic objects, this LFE will then be ignored. Now, let's see how all of this works in detail. As you know, Spacelab has two operating modes. One is called Object Mode, which is the default and is where you have access to all the sophisticated panning features of Spacelab. The other is called Classic Mode, which is designed to be used when you only need the reverb portion of Spacelab, and you want to use it as a send and return effect as you would with any other reverbs. Now, the Classic Mode technically does not work when connecting to the composer. So if you have this mode selected, it will automatically switch back to object mode upon connecting to the composer. But no worries, the plugin still continues to work as intended since classic mode is just a subset of the object mode and internally simply uses one source with the channel configuration you had selected as the input speaker layout. Now let's first check out how to use Spacelab with Dolby Atmos Composer when using it in send and return operation. We have the Composer plugin on the master bus and a few Beam plugins on other tracks. Let's create a stereo aux channel and instantiate a Spacelab plugin there. Since you only need the wet reverb signal, let's switch off dry. Now, if we switch over to the Composer plugin, we'll see that Spacelab has been recognized automatically and is displayed in the connections list. Next, let's select the layout to which Spacelab will render its reverb output. Typically, you would select the composite format you would plan to use for your Atmos mix, but you're free to choose anything from the extensive list of speaker layouts that Spacelab offers. Let's select Dolby Atmos 9.1.6. As you can see, although Spacelab lives on a stereo aux track, the output is sent directly to Composer. This way you can have a full-blown Dolby Atmos mix with 3D reverb in any DAW with just a few clicks. So with these few steps, we're already done setting everything up and we can now send whatever we want to Spacelab to add reverberation. Let's do that with the vocals. We seem to dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after. What? At this point, only the reverb portion of the vocals is coming through the Spacelab connection. 
and the dry sound is on the connection from the Dolby Atmos beam to the vocal track. When things are set up in this way, it would not make sense to switch the input source of Space Lab to dynamic object, since there is no sound coming in there. In this case, the channels allocated for the Space Lab source would just take up space for no reason. I feel superior to someone who has been there for you. I've pulled you through a world. There's also a second factor that you should take into account. While send and return operation is easy to set up, there are several features of Spacelab that are not used since the position of the input source in Spacelab is fixed and the panning of the vocals has no influence on the reverb here. This is not ideal, especially when working with 3D audio. Okay, so to really use the amazing features of Spacelab in your Dolby Atmos mix, we highly recommend that you use Spacelab in its intended way. By this I mean that panning happens in Spacelab and both dry and wet signals are sent to the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin through Spacelab. Let's change our session to do just that. We actually don't need to change a lot in our setup. First we activate dry again in Spacelab. Then let's delete the Dolby Atmos beam plugin on the vocal track because we don't need it anymore. This is because the vocals go entirely through Spacelab now. As you can see in the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin, the Atmos beam connection of the vocals has now disappeared. Now let's put a Spacelab beam plugin on that vocal track. For moving the vocals around, we have to pan them in Spacelab. Position automation in Spacelab can either be recorded on the track containing Spacelab or on the track containing the Spacelab beam plugin that connects to the source. Let's do the latter and switch Spacelab to the mode for source automation in Beam. Now, if we had several different signals that we want to process through Spacelab, we would need a Spacelab Beam for each of them. This means that we'd have to create one source for each. Since here we only have one signal, the vocals, we don't need to create additional sources. We just have to connect the single source in the list to the Spacelab Beam on the vocal track. When we do this, the amount of reverb is no longer adjusted using the send control in your DAW. It's now controlled by the dry-wet parameter of the source within Spacelab. Let's hit play and adjust it to our liking. To automate parameters within the Beam plugin, let's switch the automation mode on the vocal track to Latch. Let's press play and move the vocal source around in the panner of Spacelab. the dreams of many others you picked your battles wrong i'm not the one you should be after why feel superior to someone who has been there for you okay so let's switch automation back to read and check to see if the automation was recorded as intended we used to be a team we see the dreams of many others you picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? You might have already noticed that the movement of the source has also caused modulation in the reverb. This is due to a unique feature of Spacelab where it calculates the early reflections individually for each object depending on its position in space. This works for objects mixed to the composite as well as dynamic objects where the dry sound comes through the dynamic object channels while the reverberated sound arrives on the composite. If you don't want your moving sources to cause that kind of change, you can either use a Dolby Atmos beam to pan the dry part of the sound and leave the source in Spacelab at a static position. 
Alternatively, you can reduce the amount of individual early reflections you're liking on the object rendering tab of Spacelab. This parameter is applied for all sources in Spacelab in the same way. On that same tab, we also find a lot of other interesting parameters for source rendering that also translate to your Dolby Atmos mix. Direction focus determines the direction of the reverb depending on the position of the source. Positive values emphasize the reverb in the same direction as the source, while negative values emphasize the reverb in the opposite direction. For that to work, we first have to switch off Diffuse Earlys on the Room Character tab. We used to be a team, we see the dreams of many others. You paint your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. With distance gain dry, you can adjust how much of the volume of the dry signal is reduced when moving the source further away from the listener. Similarly, distance gain wet changes the volume of the reverb only part of your source depending on its distance to the listener. We used to be a team, we see the dreams of many others. You picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a woo with all that I could do, but I'm not here to lick your wound. Distance spread radius and distance spread curve influence how the source is spread around the listener when being very close to it. That way smooth transitions can be rendered when moving the source directly through or very close to the listener. We used to be a team, we see the dreams of many others. You picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior? To someone who has been there for you, I've pulled you through a woo. And finally, distance delay enables the delay of each object in Spacelab, depending on its distance to the listener, thereby making motion effects like Doppler possible. Be careful with this one, since the added delay may cause the affected sources to not be in time with the rest of your mix. We see the dreams of many others. You paint your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after. We used to be a team. We see the dreams of many others. You paint your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after. What? For further information on these features, please also check out our other Spacelab tutorials, especially the one about object rendering. There's a link in the description. And remember that all these features work for all sources in Spacelab, no matter if they are mixed to the composite or if they are set to be dynamic objects in Atmos.
Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.